fantastic travel reporter for the Washington Post. And that is Hannah Sampson. Hannah, Mike Leon, Nick Saveri, thank you for hopping on the podcast with us. Hey, thanks for having me. Yeah, so we really appreciate you coming on. I, I mentioned to you off air how I follow you on Twitter. Um, obviously, we've been exchanging emails back and forth. We're talking about some of the stories that you've written. Um, there's been a lot of news recently uh, with airlines and issues with travelers. There's a couple stories that you wrote about the Frontier Airlines one with the passenger situation that happened. Another one on a flight from Austin. I've seen uh, a bunch of rising cases, at least it's been reported and covered on media wise. But can you take our audience through those two cases in particular and what happened in those situations? And then why this uptick in, in, in all this violence that's at least happening or at least being reported on in the airline industry? Right. Yeah. So this was the whole beginning of my week. These two uh, these two cases happened over the weekend. And, you know, it seems like the, the one that you mentioned in Austin was pretty bad. There were a couple of guys who got into it, like fists were flying, uh, the bodies were flying into seated passengers. Um, the word was in that case that there was a, uh, a seat that wouldn't unrecline and, um, and that kind of prompted angry words. And then, man, just, just this crazy fist fight. Um, so that was, that was a story that I wrote on Monday that seemed bad. And then on Tuesday, we found out about this case in Miami um, where this individual was drinking a ton on a flight. And then he um, allegedly fondled a couple of flight attendants. Uh, another flight attendant came over to kind of keep an eye on him. And he just, again, the fists were flying. So he, he, he punched allegedly this other guy, there's video, so we can see kind of how things went down. Um, and then they pulled out the duct tape and uh, restrained him, taped him to a seat. You can actually see winding the tape around from videos that other passengers took. And uh, the guy's yelling help and they've got tape over his mouth. It was, it was pretty dramatic. Fellow was arrested after the plane landed and the, um, the crew who was involved were placed on, were placed on leave while uh, the airline investigated. So that was really like a one-two punch of bad behavior that kind of summed up uh, a lot of what we've been seeing this year when just the number of unruly passenger cases um, have soared just since January 1st. Anna, you're as, in just your reporting. Is there a sense that you know, this is somehow connected to the pandemic. Is there just something going on with um, just passenger ire just being on the rise? In, in general, I mean, American flights have never gotten the best reputation globally in terms of services and accommodations. So um, yeah, what's, what's been your thought on that? I mean, there's definitely been cases of air rage over the past decades, but based on what the FAA is reporting, the number, like the, the vast majority of cases that they are hearing about from airlines are related in some way to mask compliance. So people um, not wanting to wear their masks, pushing back against instructions to wear masks, getting really violent or abusive. Um, so we can definitely draw a line, at least from those incidents to the pandemic. Um, you know, air travel is a lot more stressful right now because you do have people who are either very opposed to being told to wear a mask on a plane, or you have people who are very stressed out about having other people near them. So tensions are just like ratcheted up and up and up. Um, so some people have said to me, you know, passengers just are kind of on a trigger wire and it doesn't take much to make them snap. Um, and, and you also have a lot of difficulties this summer with um, the number of passengers coming back very quickly, but the ability of airlines to handle all of that traffic and volume, um, not really keeping up. So you have a lot of delays and you have really full flights at a time when people aren't that thrilled about being, you know, packed next to a bunch of strangers. So it does seem like kind of a lot of factors, pandemic related or directly pandemic caused, um, are contributing to this. But everyone who I've talked to about the situation has called it really an unprecedented spike in the number of these kinds of cases. Um, so it's, yeah, not fun. Not fun to be flying right now. 
On the subject of mask wearing, has there become a standard plan from the FAA as it relates to domestic flights about just sort of overall messaging that all airlines need to be, need to be in compliance to? So there's a, a mandate from the TSA uh, that masks need to be worn on planes and airports and other forms of public transportation. And that mandate stretches right now through September 13th. The CDC has its own mandate that doesn't really have a sunset, but um, everybody's kind of keeping an eye on the TSA to say, is that going to go away in a month? Like, look at where we are right now with the number of cases and with the Delta variant. You know, is it possible they're going to remove that? Uh, and TSA is not saying. So we don't know how long the mask mandate is going to stick around. But, um, you know, I did talk to a health person who said, I cannot imagine that they would get rid of it in a month. Uh, so, you know, we'll, we'll be monitoring that and we'll see. But um, at least for the next month, that's going to be the norm. That's going to be the requirement when you fly. And one of the things that you wrote about was a piece uh, where airlines have been asking the DOJ to step in with some of these confrontations, uh, maybe harsher fines, harsher penalties, some type of deterrent to, to, to kind of way a curb the, the wave of you know, violence that's been happening, you know, for lack of a better term. Um, so what is the next step here for the DOJ? And has there been some, you know, cases that have gotten to that federal level? Or has it all been state involved in terms of the arrest of these passengers? Yeah, you know, we have definitely heard of examples where maybe the FBI has responded and, and maybe they have picked up. Um, a lot of these are fairly new, so we haven't quite been able to follow them that far down the line of justice. Um, it's interesting because in the in the case that ended in Miami recently, um, the the local the Miami Dade police report said that the FBI sent agents out who who said that they wouldn't be prosecuting this person who had allegedly punched and fondled flight attendants in the air. So it's hard to say how involved um, federal agencies are going to get in in these kinds of events. The FAA can levy fines. Um, they they and they have. They've they've announced. I, I think it's somewhere in the neighborhood of. I think it's ninety five at this point cases where they have um, announced penalties against people, but that's not criminal prosecution. So um, the more severe consequences at this point are still not really clear. We don't really know if there's going to be a lot of federal prosecution of, of people who are, you know, refusing to wear masks. The DOJ I'm sure has its hands full with a lot of things, um, but, but airlines, you know, would like a little more backing to, to kind of make it clear that there can be serious penalties for this kind of misbehavior in the air. Hannah, you recently wrote about uh, travel plans, you know, for passengers who are vaccinated or, or unvaccinated. What's the latest you can share with us um, for anyone who's considering travel plans right now? Yeah, it's a tricky thing to consider. And I, I think even among um, my, my fellow colleagues who write about travel, we're all having these discussions about, you know, what are we comfortable doing right now? Um, with the rise of the Delta variant, which we're hearing more about, huge threat to unvaccinated people, but we know that there can be breakthrough cases and um, breakthrough cases can also lead to transmission from vaccinated people. Uh, so that kind of complicates things. What we're hearing is basically health experts are saying, if you're vaccinated, if you're not at high risk of serious illness, if there is a breakthrough infection, and if you're not either traveling with vulnerable people or going home to vulnerable people, it's probably still okay to travel. Um, but it's not going to be super easy. Like there are mask mandates that are being reinstated all over the country. Um, Europe is, is open now, but there are new restrictions going into place in a lot of countries that recently reopened to Americans. Um, you, if you're unvaccinated, um, you're going to have to, in many places, like present evidence of a negative test a very recent negative test before you can do things like go up to the Eiffel Tower or you can't dine indoors in Paris. New York is just announced you're gonna to have to be vaccinated to eat indoors. Um, so, you know, 
nobody should expect to travel right now and do it like it's party like it's 2019 basically um everybody should expect it to still feel like you're traveling in a pandemic with a lot of rules even if the restrictions that we saw even if the lockdowns are over there's still going to be a lot of rules um and and definitely what health experts are saying is that if you're not vaccinated um you should really consider not traveling right now because the delta variant is very transmissible um you can get sick very easily and you might go somewhere and find out that once you're there the rules have changed and if you're not vaccinated the things that you're going to be able to do are going to be much smaller and you might not have a great time in addition to being potentially ill um so it's i mean there really are kind of a couple of paths and if you're vaccinated you probably have a lot more options to do safely and if you're unvaccinated maybe you don't care um or you know maybe you should just think about i'm going to i'm going to sit this out for a while and stay close to home and away from a lot of other people i have, i i was just thinking i still have my vaccine my vaccine card um obviously there's no mandates about well i know in new york city they're about to start asking to show proof of vaccination would it be a smart practice to just kind of keep it on me just for uh, full disclosure, I'm traveling to a COVID rich area of a state that rhymes with Arkansas in <laughs> December. Um, would it be a safe, would it be a smart practice just to probably keep my vaccination card on me? I think that's what a lot of people are advising. Yeah. I mean, I am in a COVID rich place right now that rhymes with Florida. And um, <laughs> I actually don't think that I brought mine, but again, I'm in, I'm in Borda, so they're not going to ask <laughs> for it here. Um, but I do have a picture of it on my phone. And at the very least, I think that's important. If you're like going to get on a cruise ship or you're going to go to a place that you know requires proof of vaccination, you probably want to have that card. Um, but just in case, I think probably having a copy of it or having it on your phone um, should do. I know places like New York and I think DC right now also have created apps where you can upload your a picture of your vaccine card into it and kind of use that as proof. Not sure Arkansas, you know, is going to go that direction though. Yeah, those are those are some new states I think added to the union recently. Um, Hannah, you 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 fed into the follow up, and I'm glad Nick asked that vaccine question, uh, the card question, because I'm actually traveling to DC. Uh, in the coming weeks and and recently just put the vaccination cards next to my wallet so I wouldn't forget it. But you fed into the follow-up perfectly because cruises, Florida. Uh, we had Ellie Honig on the program last week, the CNN legal analyst, talking about the legalities that are happening now with Ron DeSantis and you know the cruise industry and this lawsuits that are coming out of all of that. Where do you see some of this shaking out um, from your perspective and com- covering some of this travel news? Uh, with these legal battles that some of these private businesses want to institute this proof of vaccination or at least have these strict mandates. And then there's governors in certain states that are writing legislation to like get rid of that. So that way people don't have to show it. So the cruise lines are like, okay, well, you can just hang on on this part of the boat. Like, where do you see that kind of shaking out and and affecting the travel industry, really? Yeah, um, this has really been a roller coaster to cover. And I know there's actually... Uh, I believe there's a hearing tomorrow in one of these in one of these lawsuits. So there's a couple of different cases where the state of Florida sued the CDC to say you're overreaching with your rules for cruise lines. And the judge actually kind of went along with that. And he basically in Florida now, cruise lines don't have to follow the CDC's rules for cruising. However, they are uh, pretty much. I mean, every cruise line that's sailing out of Florida now is voluntarily following the CDC's rules. So it's not in the interest of a cruise line to be like, oh yeah, all of our COVID rules are out the window because we just want to get out there. Like people want to know they're going to be safe. So that's that's kind of one element, like what the cruise lines are doing voluntarily. On the other hand, cruise lines really want to require vaccination and in Florida, they can't. So we have one, one of the cruise lines in Norwegian suing the state of Florida um, and saying, uh, we, you can't tell us not to require vaccinations or a private company, that's what we wanna do. We don't know how that's gonna play out yet. Norwegian is not failing from Florida yet. 
several cruise lines are, and they're kind of taking their own approach to this. Um, some of them are, are actually, it almost seems like they're kind of flouting the rules because they're saying, um, yeah, we are requiring vaccinations and proof of it, but they're allowing for some exceptions, especially for kids under 12 and, and maybe adults who can't, um, who can't get a vaccine for whatever reason. Other ones are saying, we recommend the vaccine. It would be great if you got it. If you don't, um, here's like X, Y, Z thing you can't do on a cruise. And here's all the extra money you're going to have to pay because you're going to have to pay for extra testing. You know, if you like the casino, so sorry, you can't go because we're reserving that for vaccinated people only. So it really is kind of messy. Um, if you're, I know that a lot of people who are not vaccinated, who like to cruise, feel um, very put upon by this. They, they feel like they're being treated uh, like a lesser class. Um, it's not, you know, it doesn't seem like a, a super fun experience for them. Um, but cruise lines, you know, even though many of them have vaccine requirements, they're still seeing some breakthrough cases on their cruises, um, even among people who are vaccinated. So imagine you have, you know, some critical mass of unvaccinated people nobody wants to see what they saw in early 2020 um, where just you know COVID was spreading like wildfire and ships were stuck adrift for days and people were dying it was terrible like nobody wants to see that again so the goal is really we know there's going to be positive cases it happens but nobody wants a positive case to turn into a cluster to turn into an outbreak and that's kind of like what the focus is right now. That was a very long answer, but it's a very convoluted no. <laughs> situation right now. Tr trust me, I know. I mean, I've been following a lot of that news lately that's happening down there. And it's it's a tricky issue, you know, because you're getting into that private and public sector. Mm -hmm. um, go ahead, Dick. Oh, no. no. Um, Hannah, since, you know, with the reporting you've done, what's been just sort of lighting things up a little bit with the gloom and doom of, you know, pandemic part two electric boogaloo now upon us um what's been would you consider the wildest story you've had to report so far oh my goodness okay so this the the the, the plane one this week was was pretty out there um especially the video where the individual was talking about his parents net worth as he's flying on frontier which is a budget airline where you have to kind of pay for every little thing like that was bizarre but i have to say the most fun wild story <laughs> that I've had, it was just kind of like this little breath of fresh air was, um, was from a, a, a guy who just DM'd me, slid into my DMs out of nowhere on Twitter. And he was like, I saw you wrote a story a while ago about Expedia, the travel booking company. They were giving away these like replicas of a hand, blue, a blue 3D printed hand, um, Joe Jonas's hand, the uh, the pop star. Funny little story that Expedia was doing. The dude's like, they keep sending me copies of his hand. I did not ask for one. I never signed up for this. They've sent me two so far. And he's like, I, I don't know what to do about this. So, I mean, I just laughed my head off and then followed up with him and interviewed him. And he, he like sent me pictures of his, his two hands, which is, they were both the same hand. Um, unfortunately. And I talked to Expedia and Expedia is like, somebody must have signed him up for it as a joke or something, but we don't, we're going to look into why he got two. Meanwhile, there's like Joe Jonas fans everywhere who are dying for one. Um, it was ridiculous and, and hilarious. And after we published a funny story, man, I got so many emails from people who were just like, please, can he send me the hand? <laughs> and uh, and he got a ton of messages asking him for the hands um so i i don't actually know the status or the fate of them but i i think they're going to find good homes and i was very <laughs> grateful for a, a a wee break from uh pandemic madness for that story personally i'm jealous i only got one i don't know how we got both yeah, so I, 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 I was going to say up on this with you after after. But yeah, I was going to say I'm going to the concert. So I guess I'll see that guy there. Um, 
Hannah, he's not you, a fan, you, sadly. Yeah, yeah. Right, right. It was wasted on him. Yeah, right. Exactly. Um, Hannah, you do fantastic work. Like I mentioned to you off air, uh, I enjoy reading all, all of your columns and you've kept us really informed about all the travel news that's happening out there. So continued success. Uh, and, and obviously we know what state you live in. So continue to be safe, please. And mask up. Uh, I'll be thank back you. in DC soon. Oh, <laughs> <Thank> okay. <you. laughs> there you go. Thank you for hopping on the podcast today. All right. Thank you guys. Pleasure to talk to you.